Return to the highest level of European competition will make playoffs in their first split. Hey everyone, and welcome to Esports in 30. It's Monday, so we're talking League of Legends. I'm Lisa Duan, and next to me is Matt Hempstead. So it was another crazy week in League of Legends. So Matt, what what happened? It was. I mean, we're going to talk a lot about Europe and North America, but I think we need to touch on the LCK a little bit because Griffin, who was 12-0 and and looked unbeatable throughout the entire split so far, actually lost both their sets this week. They lost to Gen G when they were, uh, you know, bottom of the standings, right. and Afrika Freaks as well. So to me, it looks like they've kind of found their style, Griffin, and they've just been, you know, it's working, so we're going to stick with it while other teams have adapted. And now finally Griffin has these holes. It's time for them to adapt, change their game style, and see what they can do going forward. Oh, that's interesting. But now we got to focus on the LEC. So let's find out how Week 9 went down, shall we? Who's getting that first round by, who's sneaking into playoffs, and who's going home? So let's check out the highlights. Looking for the play, the double knocker comes out. Reckless underneath the tower, perks the first the ball. Nemesis gets it. Promise to will follow up shortly after. Whip a force away as well, but here comes the engagement. Hit the side, locked up. Yeah. They get the shot. Nemesis down. is here. The Kali goes out. Nemesis here as well. Promise to the ball. Promise to the back. Oh! Ah! He gets the kill. G2 pushing mid. They have their bell whopping. Their bell whopping again. G2 no. the base, the bow buff though. They can get the recalls. How many can they stop? G2, you've got to stop them all. You've got to stop them all. They're in the base. G2 are looking for the win. Can they pull it up? The round warp. Once again, the red wheel goes out. They wait for the next hit. Oh, no. No. Oh, no way. The next is towers at the bottom side. G2 get the first one. They're reckless and they're inside. Get in the back door. Oh, oh my God. You can do that to them! But now Ignar may have strayed too far. The TP coming in. Cold now trying to back it out. Amari finds it. Oh, wall. Memento just deleted. Ignar next on the menu. He's going to walk him down and get Patrick the kill as well. Of course, Upset now trying to find the fight. Immediately going to go in. Duke Duck now trying to peel off. Of course, a lot of frontline damage. Mithy trying to get the fight started. That's a double hand knock up. Now pulled back. Cold can follow it up. Nuke Duck flashing forward. That's Death's hand. Another one going to go down. Double for Nuke Duck OG. A confident and clean game. Kill we'll the Nexus. Kill the Nexus <laughs> and get one step closer to second place. Holding off, starting the fight. Dream's gonna try to land the head up override. That's a big slam, but that's gonna be massive. Oh. Now taking him down. Tell me kicking him out. Crouch out manages to find the kill. Abadaga desperate to get something back. Here comes the TP, but Odawamne needs to disengage. A massive cannon all could turn this one. But is he gonna go for it? He flashes and he's trying to find it. He's trying to turn this game around for his team. He's gonna get one. He's gonna get two. As the Zanya's here, self-made available. Period coming in. Perfectly timed, and he gets shut down. Abadage running in, desperate to get something back. But Crouch shot kills him. That's the quadra for Tristana. Find it. Where is Odawamne gonna go? They need that cannon all. It's been upset, untouched on the backside. Still doing a lot of damage, but he's only hitting the front line. Crown shot remains untouched. Period. still alive. Warlord is still alive. This is going to be the crown shot show. SK Gaming and their return to the highest level of European competition will make playoffs in their first split. The playoff picture in Europe is set, and after all is said and done, Origin secured second place and a first round playoff bye. To chat about a crazy week nine at Origin's amazing spring split, we got Jonas Cold Anderson joining us. Congrats, Cold. How are you feeling? Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> feeling great. Obviously, uh, this weekend turned out pretty much as best as possible right. for us. So, um, yeah, it was it was a perfect week for us and the perfect ending to a good later stage of the, the spring split for us. So um, I'm pretty happy. Let, let's just put it like that way. <laughs> I mean, going into it, there was a, a possibility for a ton of tiebreakers. You guys had to face Schalke and Excel, and then even then there were potential extra matches against Vitality or Splice, but everything just kind of fell in your favor. So walk me through the like the emotions of this weekend, you know, how you guys managed to go 2-0. Ooh, uh, the emotions. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we going into this week, we knew that we didn't really have it, it was not in our hands how it was going to go. We could only focus on, on what was in front of us, which was the two games. So we prepared as much as we could for the games. And uh, I think we showed the performance that we, we were expecting from ourselves. So I was happy with that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for, for myself, it was like already the week before we qualified for playoffs. So I was already um, a little bit emotional about that because it mean, means a lot to me to go to playoffs. So um, 
we were uh, after our game against XL when we beat them, and we were waiting. We were watching the Fnatic and Spice series go on, um, and we were all s sitting backstage and just like screaming, uh, going crazy when we figured out that Fnatic won uh, and we made second place, which means that we uh, go directly to Rotterdam no matter what. Um, so yeah, it's just it's it's kind of hard to put word words into it, but it's, it just means so much uh, for us. Yeah, I saw the tweet on, on Twitter. You did tweet out how it meant so much to you that you made it, which we're so happy to hear. It's so great. Uh, let's talk about your split, though, because Origin really turned it around. You guys ended the season now, I think, 11-4? Is that the, or 12? No, it's 12. I think this, uh, 12, it's 12. 12-4 now, I think. Oh, 12 yeah. six. Right. But it started yeah. out pretty rough. It did start out really rough. So what happened yeah. in the middle of the split that allowed you guys to, like, turn it around? Um, uh, we, I mean, so we are a completely new team with players that have never played before. So uh, sometimes a little optimistic to go into it and be just be playing super well from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we were actually expecting a lot from us from the start because uh, our practice going into the split was going super well. Um, maybe a little bit too well, uh, <laughs> I would say. So um, when we got to the stage in the first couple of weeks, we were heavily underperforming and some of it was because we were not... The things we had worked towards in the practice leading up to the split was just not happening the same way. Uh, and I think this is like a usual trend for, for some teams. So we, we just sat down and worked on the things that were not working out the way it should be. And um, I think we found our groove throughout the season. And and uh, now we are we are like a well-oiled machine. I think that's 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 how a lot of analysts see us play because we are we are not like the flashiest team. Uh, we we like to do things uh, slow and steady and take take good decisions throughout the game. Not too many not too many risks that can go either way, but make sure that we always are taking the, the right decisions to to make us win. So um, I'm just I'm just fortunate to be in a position where I play with players with so much experience like we have we have people like nuke dog people like uh um Miffy on the team that also that brings so much knowledge uh, that we can put together so we work towards the same goal so um but i think it just came together throughout the season for us yeah and going into the split there was a ton going on with franchising right mm -hmm. i mean there were a lot of good looking rosters caps went to g2 mm -hmm. Fnatic was still pretty much the same with nemesis going in and misfits did their whole like overhaul Ooh. with their roster too the, yeah. and the then, super team the super team and look <laughs> exactly, how that turned out but let's team. not get into that yet <laughs> yeah but after that you know this origin roster with with all these players coming from pretty good teams uh, came together but i don't think anyone really pegged you guys as being second place so do you guys feel like you kind of exceeded expectations there uh, I mean, we, we it's it's too early to say that we are still we are still we still haven't started the playoffs yet, so sure. uh, we will see how it goes. But um, we sometimes there is a lot of like analysts and uh, uh, people from broadcast that put out uh, this team is going to perform well, this team is not going to perform well. Uh, often, what comes down to it is how you mesh as as players and as as teammates and. We, from the get-go, when we met up as, as the new Origin squad, we there was something unique about it in, in the way we were working together that um, you just know that feeling when you mess well together with your teammates. And that's kind of what we had uh, from the start. So uh, all of the players we have on, on Origin are super talented people that have shown uh, glimpses of hope somewhere. Um, so sometimes you just need to uh, get in that situation where everything just works well together and then then it doesn't matter if some other teams maybe have more star power or um, looks better on paper because in the end that doesn't really matter it's how you how you're gonna work well together and uh, as a unit so I think that's where we probably are uh, have shown that uh, it doesn't matter if you're building a super team uh, hinting towards misfits uh, <laughs> In the end, it's how well you're going to work together. And I think Origin and uh, Refresh made uh, some very good um, preparation for us to succeed. Um, so I'm just happy to, to be part of it. For sure. Now we have to look forward. With playoffs coming up, um, LEC introduced a new format. So uh, how, what do you think about the new format? Are you a fan? 
Uh, I mean, I'm definitely a fan of you. <laughs> if you're if you. going first or second, um, so yeah, I mean, the format is is obviously different. There is a lot more on the line in the in the regular season because first and second place means way more. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually a big fan of it because it means that people <laughs> did some in the past. There was always these excuses: ah, as long as we make playoffs, it doesn't matter what place we are in the regular seasons. Regular season games don't matter that much. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I think it's. It's cool that it means a lot to get the first and second place, and um, it also meant that throughout the season there was a lot more on the line um, with every game uh, that you had to find a way to be stable in your performance so that you could ramp up the, the wins uh, every weekend. So mm -hmm. um, I like it. I think it's going to be cool. Uh, I'm also really excited for uh, when we're going to play the finals, uh, the split in Rotterdam, because <laughs> we are not playing, there is not a, a, fir a third and fourth place match. It's basically you go there and on the Saturday there is a there is a semi-final and whoever wins that will play the final uh, the day after. So um, I think it's going to be super cool at the live event because every game there has so much, uh, there's so much more storytelling and there's so much more excitement in in the in the second game, I mean, in the first game of, of that event. So uh, I, I overall uh, love the, the changes. Okay. And for even for you guys now going into this, this match against G2, even whoever loses that match still has another chance to, to get back to the finals, right? So does this take a little bit of pressure off in your preparation and in your actual like live event mm -hmm. uh, game there? Because um, now, even if you lose, it's like, okay, we still have that that second chance. Second so chance. can you guys take some more risks now in that first game against you 2 hmm. I mean, definitely. Um, I, I wouldn't say it takes more pressure off you because um, we are still in a position where we want to... There is so much to gain from uh, going to get the first place. So uh, not only are you only having to play one best of series that weekend, but you also you get to see your opponent play the day before. And mm. uh, so even though it might it's it's definitely nice that you you get a second chance i think anyone in life would love a second chance once in a while uh, so uh, it's it's great but we are here to we are here in the playoffs to to win uh, and to win it all so it doesn't it doesn't really matter i think we if if we can't beat g2 in in the in the first game we play against them then maybe we can't beat them in, in the final either so um, mm. we 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 are we are very committed towards uh, showing the best performance we we have um, if that's taking more risk or not it doesn't really matter uh, we 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 just want to show uh, the origin that we know we can be well, that's oh, that's so exciting. I'm actually getting so excited to watch those matches. Uh, but let's bring it back. Let's tune it back to talk about what happened in this past week because we have to talk about that Fnatic versus G2 game. Did you catch it? Did oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that's a yes. <laughs> oh, that's wow. a yes. Yeah. So why don't you give us yeah. a little recap for those who maybe who have missed it? Yeah, so for anyone who didn't see it, I mean, Fnatic had this massive gold lead, about 8K <laughs> early on, and then G2 held on. They finally got a good fight at Elder Dragon. And it basically ended in a crazy base race after uh, Fnatic was going for Baron. They got it. G2 tried to go in oh for the God. back door, but then Fnatic counter back oh door. It was just, it was super hectic, um, and it was super messy. So, just what are your thoughts on this this end game situation, <laughs> and like what what's going through the players' minds in a, in a chaotic situation like this? EU fest Fiesta. Yeah, Fiesta. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, funny enough, a lot of people were going out and saying that this was a EU Fiesta, but I actually <laughs> really, I from from like a. From a professional point of view, I actually really enjoyed watching that game because um, there were so many small things that can go that that if it goes wrong, you instantly lose the game. And uh, G2 was holding on for so long, and I actually thought uh, at some point I was sure that they won the game when they won this fight around the, the Elder Drake. But then they they couldn't end, and then there was a Baron fight, and G2 uh, I mean Fnatic ended up winning with I think two seconds left on respawn time off oh in hip. So it was just absolutely crazy. It, it's some of the, you are in those scenarios that you you can't really prepare yourself for. You just need to you just need to go with with kind of your gut feeling in the moment, and right. that's what happened to Fnatic. They went with the gut feeling and uh, rushed to the base and ended the game. Uh, so, I mean, I just those kind of games are just I think as a League of Legends fan, it's just <laughs> super fun to watch. Uh, uh, it could have went either way. I still believe that. Uh, Fnatic should be a little disappointed that they mm. couldn't close the game with such a big lead. Um, so I think what will be really interesting to see is does this change if Fnatic and G2 is going to go up and play against each other in the playoffs? Uh, like just just the mental aspect of going into a series when 
this was the last game you played where right. uh, even though Fnatic won it's I think men uh, mentally it's it's probably not as one like it's not a, a big win for Fnatic because the G2 held for so long in a game where they should have lost in 25 so um, uh, the game was just super cool to watch and I, I, I loved every every bit of it and I'm excited to see uh, if these two teams are going to go up against each other in the playoffs again, uh, how how it's going to go. Mm. Yeah, especially, I mean, Fnatic, the way Fnatic was closing up the split two was so dominant, and G2's like the opposite end of the spectrum. They kind of struggled down the stretch. They finished with only one win in their last five games, and that's, yeah. that's also your opponent um, in this first round. So how much do you read into their end of split struggles? Do you think it's actually a sign of, like, uh, what's to come in this playoff series, or are they just, you know, they locked up first place a while back, and they've just been kind of hiding strats? Uh, it's it's so hard to say actually because um, they obviously had to sub in um, Promise Q. Uh, Mickey was not playing the last couple of weeks. I think the last three games. Um, and on top of that, they were locked first, so they didn't have that much to play for. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think they they definitely show some weaknesses and. Obviously, they will go out and say that it was because the games didn't matter as much. Mm -hmm. um, but they are they they have been struggling a bit. Also, with the fact that uh, Miki had to uh, be subbed out, they didn't have as much practice going into the last weeks as as uh, for example us. So um, now there's going to be a long break. I think three weeks until we play them. A mm. uh, little less than three weeks. So they they can catch up a lot, but. Um, I think definitely they they are they are not on the rise and they are, they don't look like the team from the start of the season where everyone was just like how do you even beat this team because they were just destroying you in 20 minutes uh, but nowadays it's it's very different they do a lot more mistakes mm -hmm. they um, they seem to not have too much strategy involved in that play it's more just uh, big muscles and brute force and uh, just destroy the opponent but if they don't do that then then they look weaker so yeah. uh, we will see uh, we we have a lot of respect for them and we know that you can't underestimate a team like g2 so um we will see i think it, the team that makes that shows up the best on the day will will, will be victorious and i think it's going to be a close series uh, when we're going to face them for sure i mean you know when you're do like so dominant for so long you're waiting for someone to challenge you yeah and mm. maybe you know that might be origin to take it that crown be. from them and see so we'll have to wait well, we don't want to get too cocky either way, you know. Um, but let's throw to an actually a fan question because we got, we asked social media, you know, if there's any questions for you. And we got one from Benji on Instagram. And I don't know if this is a troll question. It might be. But <laughs> a little bit. A little <laughs> trolly. I like it, though. So he asked, how does it feel being under such a god analytical genius like Deficio? I need to know his true power. So I guess the question is more like looking to what does Deficio kind of provide for the team? What's it like working with him? Yeah, um, I mean, I, so I've been, I've been, I've known the Fisher for so long. Um, he was part of back, back, way, way back then, maybe like five, six years ago, when he was, when I was playing like in the Danish scene, he was around. Um, so I've known him forever, and he's a good friend of mine. So I, I love working with him. He is very passionate about League of Legends. Obviously, I think that is that is something you can't deny from the guy from a guy like him when you see have seen him on the broadcast for so many years um uh, but for for origin specifically he is the guy that was helping making sure all of uh, everything involved us are functioning uh from us players having a good relationship to uh, making sure everything works uh, with the organization with us so he's like the he's the guy that kind of does it all um so not so much about leak anymore. It's more uh, on the on the structure things where he he he's involved in in that regard. But he he bumps into us once in a while and uh, <laughs> gives us some tips on leak and tries to get tries to to help us when when he can. Um, but basically, the the most important for 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 what he brings is just he he helped. Um, he helped refresh that that, that board um, origin to have the best structure possible for us mm. to perform. Um, so he, he, he's, uh, he's, he's a big, even though he's not showing a lot up on, 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 on the team and when we are in uh, Berlin and stuff, he, he's a big part of why we are succeeding. So um, I, I have a lot of respect for him and I love working with him. That's awesome. I actually just imagined if Fischu always just standing behind all the players while they're scrimming, <laughs> being like, why would you do this? You know, like that's what I assumed. But. <laughs> 
I guess I guess not. Yeah, I mean, guess not. he's so we are we are playing from an office and he is at the office. So we get mm. to meet him almost every almost yeah. every day. Um, and he he definitely likes to come by and watch us. <laughs> he feels uh, like a physio, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, he. He is still the same official, uh, just in a different role. Oh, we miss him on the casting desk, oh, you sure. know. But you know, it's amazing. Obviously, Origin's doing so well. So, Colt, it was a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, of course. best of luck in the playoffs. Thank you, thank you. It will be exciting. I think uh, everyone should tune in for for the LEC playoffs because uh, we have so many good teams, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a banger. I'm sure of it. All right, we'll definitely be watching. So although the LSC has put a bow on its regular season, it was actually only week eight in the LCS. So let's check out all the action as any's best fight for the playoffs. Kadian once again makes it towards the mid lane, forcing out the flash from Frog and gonna split it. Gonna be flashes following that one up at first blood over to Acadian. Yeah, contracts are already down. It means DSM has the numbers advantage. Why not go ahead and take that? Turn it into something amazing. As Deathly's taken down, the Rexi ultimate guarantees it. And that's exactly what they're gonna do now. They're going in. They've got the whole team ready to go. It's Frog and into the stasis will not matter. There comes the spears. Acadian's unstoppable. Also grabbing a kill down onto Ole. 26 minutes in. They'll take their revenge on the Golden Guardians and maintain firm control over third place. We'll see if they can find down. it. Final out pop there for Sneaky Smith going in the back. There's a good Galio off, but I don't know if they can get it up in. So it's going in the back side. It's Phoenix able to get that kill off the wreck side. Fox may just be too strong, but Sneaky still alive shooting in the fight, but needs to get the kills on key member Solo living for a little while longer. Phoenix still alive as Sneaky tries to dodge around it. Phoenix able to grab that quadra kill, and that's going to give Fox the victory. The carries stand strong for Echo Fox, and they will upset Cloud9 here. Doesn't go to the enemy Krugs, he goes to his oh, Raptor through the fan oh, and he finds it! Torrid! There's no Spire here for the Skarner. You cannot fight without a Spire. Rip little oh. Scorpion, I will see you later. Viper and Pope are trying to keep everybody away. Baron down to about 4k. Turtle looking to find the kill. Smith, he's out! FlyQuest could likely secure the Baron here for themselves. Impact trying to go in, keep them away from this one. If he can, Baron gonna be taken down with that. Wild Turtle will provide the damage. Putting auto attack after auto attack into the Nexus turrets. Pope Elter getting himself away. Core JJ going to be taken low. Turtle and Viper on the next step. Ladies and gentlemen, FlyQuest defeat Team Liquid. Wiggly taken out. Smoothie taken very low, but CLG's in some trouble. TSM are fighting health bars all over the place. It's Bio down. It's Power of Evil into the stasis. It's Dershawn not able to buy the time. Power of Evil's out of there. And there comes TSM. Very difficult to get on oh, value. Smoothie's going in. Here comes your fight. They're able to find a lot of damage down onto Power of Evil at the start, and that is surely exactly what they need. It's two kills over to TSM. Make it three. The claw comes out. 6A runs back. Wiggly's back into the fountain now as well. And the streak continues. TSM take down CLG. TSM does it again. Not only have they won nine of the past 10 games, but they continue to dominate CLG. I think CLG hasn't even won a match since uh, 2016, maybe, spring split, right? Yeah, That's it's, correct? it's been three years. So is it really a rivalry at this point? Because CLG and TSM were like the rivalry of NA. You know, the broadcast is going to keep trying to make it a rivalry so that they can try to sell this game. But in actuality, to be a rivalry, it actually has to have wins going both directions. And TSM has won 13 straight matches against CLG. Aww. So at this point, I don't think you can call it a rivalry at all, which is unfortunate because going back to like season two, season three, this is how, you know, LCS was founded from the Reginald versus Hotshot GG and the legendary players. And now the rivalry is basically dead. That's which right. Is if you're an OG sad. fan, you know, back then that was the rivalry. Were you team CLG or team TSM? CLG. Yes, CLG. There's only one right answer. That, that's true. If you're a TSM fan, then um, you can leave. Yeah. Okay, I'm joking. So let's talk about TSM's success. So Absolutely. what has made them so successful this split? Well, I mean, how many times have we heard the, the narrative that TSM doesn't do anything until the late game, right? Too much. <laughs> well, finally now, it looks like they've actually changed that, and part of it is Acadian, who wasn't even supposed to be their starting jungler going into the year. It was supposed to be Grig, but all of a sudden, right. Acadian came in. He's been doing really aggressive moves, and I think it's also been the smoothie subbing in uh, for Mithy. Uh, Mithy obviously going back to Origin, and it's worked out for both teams, but for TSM, finally now they're doing things in, in the early game, and it gets them going, it makes sure that they're not just sitting back, trying not to fall behind, instead, 
they're playing for the win instead of just playing not to lose until like 30 minutes. Right. What about Bjergsen? Everyone always talks about Bjergsen when we're talking about TSM. So yeah. has he changed how he played or what has he done to I step think up? He's been called it a lot in the past too for not roaming, right? Yeah. That's always been his criticism and all of a sudden now he is starting to do that. He's played Lissandra. This week he played Lissandra both games, 2-0. Mm. Uh, and oh, So very impressed by his performance. And it just that's one of the champions that lets you teleport out, help out, and just get that CC going in, in like roaming ganks. So I think he's done a lot of uh, good on that champion. Right. And of course, just overall, uh, he's moving around the map more, which is very important. So with Bjergsen, it's almost like when you put him on a champion that requires him to roam and be more, you know, team, I guess, uh, rounded, yeah. he's able to do it. He just needs that champion. Twisted Fate? To, uh, ooh, that would be a fun game to watch. Nah, okay. All right, let's move on to Cloud9. Yep. So Cloud9 actually played a game with Golden Glue. So what what can we read into that? Like, are they better now with Golden Glue? Or? If it was any team other than <laughs> Cloud9, we'd just be like, oh, they're just, you know, they're in second place. They're just going to try some new players out. But because it's Cloud9, and we saw what they did last year, they brought in the, the seven-man roster, Blabber and uh, Golden Glue. Also spent some time last mm -hmm. year, even something in for Jensen when he was on the team. So now Golden Glue came in to give Niski a one-game break, maybe just... Can we put him in, in in the playoffs to give us a little bit of a different look? Um, I don't know, but Reaper loves to experiment with his roster, so we'll see if he actually uses this going forward. They've lost that game, Ooh. so it's probably not the best result if they actually want to use Golden Glue going forward. It's probably going to be the Niski show, to be honest. Um, and I think they'll stick with a five-man going forward. It was just another one of those, Niski, you played great, take a break. Yeah, I think at this point in the season when you kind of already have your spot locked in, it's a time to start testing the other players to see who can maybe they can you know put in for playoffs if yeah. needed, right? So it might be one of those situations. They also like to reward their players who have done really well in Academy, right? So Golden Glue, obviously, he's been one of these solo Q stars, Academy stars for a yeah. long time. We saw him last year. He did pretty well. He did. Um, so give him another shot, let him play on the big stage, and then Niski get back in there. Well, let's move on to FlyQuest because Big Shocker, they beat Team Liquid. Yeah. That's true. So what, true. explain this to me, Matt, because that doesn't make sense. Okay, so FlyQuest, they fell behind early, right? Xmithy yeah. got uh, the better of Santor, and it was looking pretty ugly, but they made some good macro plays. Uh, Viper had some great flanks to catch up Dub Lift, who was on Vayne for the second time that week. Um, and they just, it looked like their shot calling is coming together really well. FlyQuest, one of those teams we didn't know what to expect going into the year, because it's not really like these big name players, right? It's a bunch of guys who, so they've got some experience, but we don't know what they're going to do as a team, and they've done a lot of good things. But for Team Liquid, you know, they've already locked up first. What do they have to play for? Basically nothing. So right. are they going to leak new picks? Are they going to leak new strats? Absolutely not. So you think this is a strategy thing on Team Liquid side? Well, they're just going to play what, what they've shown already. They're not going to show any new cards. So okay. does that give them a bit of a, a lesser hand? Absolutely. But does that make FlyQuest win any less important? I don't think so. I mean, they clinched playoffs off that game. So that's a big deal for sure. That's awesome. Now we have to talk about another team that I'm really sad about oh, that's no. in, they're finally not making playoffs, 100 Thieves. So 100 Thieves are officially not in playoffs. They're dead. And I think didn't probably take to like Twitter to talk about it. It was so sad. It was really sad. He oh. seemed pretty emotional in the tweet, though I can't really tell emotional. Yeah, you can tweet. read the tone. Totally. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> but he was basically saying that the entire thing was his fault. I mean, the quote is, this split is on me. I had a good roster to work with and couldn't create a winning team. Sorry to all the fans for letting you guys down. We'll start preparing for summer because Aww. they're officially eliminated after bringing in Bang. Someday, Afro, look, this team looks amazing on paper, but something just didn't work. It's probably a bit much to say that he's entirely responsible for yeah. doing this. I mean... Yes, he's the coach of a team that looks amazing, mm -hmm. but at the same time, these players have to come together somehow in-game without him being the, the voice, right? Yeah. He can't be there in-game to help them out. So he can't take all the blame. He can only do the draft and coach from afar. Right. You can't help the in-game product. But I mean, as a coach, sometimes you hope that they're, he's the one that like brings them together. But hey, hopefully next season, they're able to do it because I'm still kind of low-key cheering for them. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on because I think they have, there's another week of NALCS yes. before playoffs is officially like yes. locked in and all that. So who do you think will be able to sneak into playoffs based on, I guess, upcoming games and all that? Do I have to pick one? You have to pick one. Yes. I mean, they're going to be swept in the first round of the playoffs anyways because, look, the, the team in sixth place is probably going to get in with eight wins, like eight and <laughs> ten. That's not really hopeful for their chances. But if I had to choose yes. one, I'd probably take CLG just because of the schedule they have remaining. Okay. It's pretty easy. They're, they have a huge match against Echo Fox, mm. which will basically decide it. Um, but there's also a game against 100 Thieves, and of course, they haven't looked so hot, so they should be able to take that game home. And it's basically a three-way race between CLG, Echo Fox, and Optic for that final playoff spot, and I don't know. 
I'm going to give it to CLG, even right. though none of those teams really deserve it, to be honest. Oh, well, we can't have a playoff bracket with just five teams, right? No. So uh, we got we to you gotta choose. Right. Um, now let's move on to MVP, because we got to pick, I guess, the best playing player of the week. So Matt, who is your pick for this week? This one was pretty easy. And really? I mean, SK Gaming had an absolutely amazing week. They went 3-0 because they had to have a tiebreaker game in which they won over Schalke to make it into the playoffs. Mm. So this one's going to self-made the jungler for SK. He's been praised all year long for just being different, not doing the expected things, having different jungle routes, going to different places to gank. And it led with like an amazing stat line of 9, 7, and 24 in three games. Mm -hmm. And he's just been carrying the team all game long. I think every time they've won, he's basically been the, the player of the game uh, decided by the broadcast, which is obviously a sign of just what he's done for them. So I think he's not only the player of the game, but maybe even the player of the entire split. Wow. Uh, they're not going to give him MVP, but he's been important <laughs> to SK's growth. No one expected them to really be where they are. Right. And I think it's just been huge on his part to just get in there, do things his way, coming in from the, the you know, the, the challenger scene right. and now just showing up. So it seems like Selfmade is definitely the guy to be watching in playoffs, especially when SK do their matches. Um, so now the LEC is wrapped up. There is still more League of Legends happening. Yes. So what do we have uh, to look forward to? Well, obviously in the LCK, I mentioned Griffin off the top that, you know, they had a 12-0 uh, record going into this weekend and then they lost both their matches. So what's going on with Griffin? Can they rebound? We'll have to wait and see what's going on with them. And then, of course, over in the LCS, huge implications on the line to see who makes playoffs. you got Echo Fox against CLG. You've got Optic versus the Golden Guardians. All these teams trying to fight for those final two playoff spots because you've got Team Liquid, Cloud9, TSM, and FlyQuest already locked up. So there's just that fifth and sixth spot left. Ooh, that's spicy. That means all the eyes are going to be on the LCS this weekend as the LEC has a week off before playoffs. But that's all the time that we have for Esports in 30. Once again, thank you to Cold for chatting with us today. And of course, all of you for hanging out. So if you don't already, hit us up on all the socials at Squad State. We'll be back here tomorrow for some Overwatch League with AJ and Ron.